But it's it's something that we really have to study, maybe, so that you can... Uh-oh. So we can have a system. Okay, hey, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> morning! Good morning, everybody. It's already Friday. It's the weekend. It's hey, Jen. It's almost my birthday. It's hey, almost your birthday. birthday. Okay, okay, so before that, let's do the gospel reading for today, okay? Coming from St. John still, chapter 1, verses 40, 43 to 51. It's practically a continuation of uh, yesterday's narration of when St. John and who was the other saint? Saint Apostle St. Andrew. Andrew met our Lord for the first time, okay? So this is a continuation of that. So if you remember everything we... Uh, talked about yesterday well it's going to be an easy segue into ooh, into uh, today's gospel okay jesus decided to go to galilee so from uh, uh the river jordan where where john the baptist was baptizing and where he met uh john and andrew so jesus decides to go to galilee and he found philip he found philip there doesn't tell us exactly how he found philip but uh, but he found him there. Okay? And Jesus said to him, follow me. Jesus must have just seen through Philip and said, follow me. Okay? Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the town of Andrew and Peter. Andrew and Peter. See, Philip found Nathaniel. So you see, Jesus found Philip. Then Philip found Nathaniel. Nathaniel was his friend. And told him, we have found the one about whom Moses wrote in the law and also the prophets, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Who is creeping behind me? <laughs> okay. But Nathaniel said to him, can anything good come from Nazareth? See, Nathaniel was doubtful, right? Nathaniel was questioning the uh, the the um, what maybe the the integrity of anybody who would come from uh, uh, Nazareth maybe Nazareth was was a small sleepy kind of town that uh, nothing great ever came from there right? and and all of a sudden uh, you're telling me that the Messiah the Son of God Jesus Christ the Christ the Messiah is going to come from Nazareth they never expected it, right? Uh, because they always had the image that, you know, the, the Messiah is going to be from the line of David. See? Um, he's going to be a king. A king. A king coming from Nazareth? Right? It didn't quite fit the, uh, the uh, stereotype that they had about, uh, about uh, the expectation of where the Messiah might come from. Okay, and what does uh, Philip tell Nathaniel? He said, come and see. Doesn't that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Come and see. Who said the same thing? Come and see. Jesus. To Jesus, right? Chevelle, right? In yesterday's gospel, Jesus said the same thing. Come and see. Right? And now Philip says the same thing to Nathaniel. Come and see. I don't need to be talking too much. You just come and see. You see for yourself, right? So again, again, here is where we, we uh, see the power of good example. It's, it's better just to just come and experience it. Come and see Jesus. And you are going to see for yourself what, uh, what I'm talking about, right? Okay. And then, so, okay, Philip brings Nathaniel to Jesus. Now, he meets Jesus for the first time. What does Jesus say? Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said to him, Here is a true child of Israel. There is no duplicity in him. See, he was just approaching. You can imagine Nathanael just approaching like that. They haven't even shaken hands or, or, or did the traditional uh, Jewish uh, hug and kiss, right? Maybe he was still approaching. He was still walking. And Jesus was already saying to him, Here 
is a true Israelite in whom there is no guile. That's the original text in English translation. Okay? But here it says, there's no duplicity in him. What is duplicity? Duplicate. What is duplicate? Having a copy, having two, right? Two. Duplex comes from two. Duplicity comes from two. Meaning he is not a two-faced kind of a person. He, he doesn't have a double character. He doesn't have uh, one side of him which is good and another side of him which is bad. Or one side which he, you know, it's like uh, Jekyll and Hyde, right? <laughs> two personalities, you see, in one person. Okay. Uh, okay, well, and then Nathaniel said to him, how do you know me? How do you know me? And Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Wow. Really? You did? Must have thought in his head, right? Really? Wow. So you must be the real guy. You, you, you must be him, right? Because how can you see me, right? How can you do this? So even, it, even the expression of his surprise at Jesus' um, uh, statement uh, is, is a reflection of how simple Nathaniel was. Of, of the, it's an expression of the fact that there's no duplicity in him. He just expresses what he feels and what he thinks. See? He doesn't have to calculate his words and, 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 uh, and, uh, and, 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 and be mindful of human respect. Right? He just says what's in his mind. Really? Right? <laughs> okay. Well, Nathaniel answered him, Rabbi, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him and said, Do you believe? Because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will see the sky opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. That's the end of that gospel. So beautiful, beautiful gospel today, which and there's so many lessons we can pick up from here. right? And maybe the first thing that I want to reiterate is come and see. right? The power of good example. And let us, we are again being reminded here. Of what we talked about yesterday when Jesus told the two disciples come and see okay? that many times when we uh, when we live our lives according to the will of God God will shine forth in us and we don't have to talk too much anymore to attract people not to us but to Jesus Christ right through us and and uh, all we need to do is give good example we have an obligation to give good example to everybody right because that's the way people get attracted to jesus christ it is through and by our example and speaking of good example you see a person who allows jesus christ to dwell in his soul right the 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 question yesterday of the two disciples where do you live right jesus says come and see and our conclusion was where does jesus live he lives in our hearts that's his real dwelling place, where he should be, right? And if Jesus really lives in our hearts, if Jesus really is our life, then we don't have to force the issue of giving good example. Our character shines through, like Nathaniel. Okay? Nathaniel, the, 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 the true Israelite in, in whom there is no duplicity. Why? Because he has no masks. He is not one way for some people and another kind of person for other people. Okay? No, he's, he is who he is. He is himself. He is simple. He is transparent. He is sincere. Okay? Because there is real goodness in his soul. There's real goodness. You see, character is something that shines through. You cannot hide character. No matter how much you try. Okay? Or... You cannot also do the opposite. No matter how much you try to pretend that you are something, like you try to pretend you're goody-goody, okay? People will see through you. People will see through you. People will know that, that this is fake, that this is not the real you. 
And why were there many, many indications of that? Because it's not consistent. Your other behaviors are not consistent with your goody-goody character. Okay? And there is where duplicity is. See, there's no consistency. And when there's no consistency, well, you're busted. <laughs> right? You just revealed the fact that you're not being true to the image you are projecting. Okay? So let's try to be more like Nathaniel who was sincere. There's sincerity. There's transparency in him. That is why Jesus could see through the real him. And let's not forget that Jesus always sees through. We cannot hide from Jesus. We, think, we might think we can hide, you know, we do a little uh, foolishness and uh, 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 mischief and we think, oh, oh, nobody could see me. I can do this in the secrecy of my room or in the secrecy of the bathroom or wherever I am. Right? Nobody can see me. I can hide under my bed. Uh, 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 uh. You kids already know you're always busted when it comes to me, right? I always can find out, right? And sooner or later, you will get busted. Well, why wait for that? Because even if I take a while to find out, or mommy takes a while to find out about your mischief, God always knows instantly. Right? So there's no point hiding. There's no point trying to cover up when we make mistakes. Right? Let's just own up to it. Let us just be sincere. Let's own up to it. Let's be sorry. And just like Jesus, you will be understood. You'll be forgiven. You'll be given another chance. But the more we hide our wrongdoings, the more we try to cover it up, the more we get into trouble. And that's not only, well, about mischief of kids, right? Uh, folks, it applies to all of us, right? We cannot hide our wrongdoings from God. God knows everything. God is everywhere. God knows everything. So when we do wrong things, we, we cannot think that we can hide from the justice of God. No. Sooner or later, we will suffer the consequences of our lack of transparency, our insincerity. So who are we fooling? Really, who are we fooling? No one else but ourselves, right? So let us not incur uh, the, the uh, wrath of God. Um, um, God is merciful, so, but, you know, let's just ask for forgiveness when we do wrong. Let's go to confession and do a sincere confession and everything will be, will be good. But the more we hide things to ourselves, the more uh, we uh, uh, are insincere in confession. Or if we don't even go to confession, well, then that's worse, right? Uh, we are not availing of the mercies of God. Okay? Because uh, while plenty of people always talk about mercy, 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 like we even had the year of mercy in the church, one thing that people are forgetting about is that God is also all just. Okay? While God is all merciful, He is also all just. Therefore, he will uh, exact whatever um, uh, justice there needs to be exacted from our wrongdoings. Mm -hmm, yeah. uh, I'll explain to you later, honey, what that is. Okay, being good. Yeah. Okay, so let us try to be like Nathaniel, like Nathaniel in this gospel. No duplicity. There's sincerity, there's transparency, there's openness. Truth. He always spoke the truth. That's the other thing here. Okay? He was very truthful and he always spoke the truth. So we have to learn to always speak the truth, act in accordance with the truth, okay? promote the truth, broadcast the truth. Okay? So as not to allow any sort of lie or any sort of duplicity to engulf our hearts and our souls. And you know what our Lord said? Oh, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. See, God does miracles for those who believe Him and who are sincere with Him. See, God does miracles as He did not only for the apostles, not only for the disciples, you see, who witnessed firsthand all of the great miracles of Jesus Christ. But Jesus continues to perform those miracles for all of us. For all of us. Okay? 
He continues to perform those miracles in our lives. Both the miracle of our own personal sanctity, which can grow little by little, little by little every day. The miracle of our own personal sanctity. And besides that, the miracles of providing for our needs. The providence of God is very real. Right? God provides for people who, are, who abide by His will. Right? God provides for our needs, for our everyday needs. And those are the little miracles that God does for us in our everyday lives. If we are sincere, if we're truthful, if we speak the truth, if we live by the truth and abide by the will of God. Okay, is it time? It is time. Okay, folks, we got to go to Mass now. So that's it for us. Uh, um, a few little things. Well, today's the 5th of uh, January. It's the anniversary of my father-in-law's uh, passing. Uh, if you can keep him in your prayers, his name is Oscar. Um, and then... Sh I'll cover you up. And then uh, 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 <laughs> tomorrow is our wedding anniversary. Where's mommy? She's hiding. But anyway, tomorrow is our wedding anniversary. So we will celebrate that. Please pray for us. Pray for our marriage. Um, pray for our family. Uh, and then uh, Sunday on the 7th is the birthday of Chevelle. Where is Chevelle? She already She's gone. Her. She's gone. Okay. It's uh, how old is Chevelle going to be? Six. She's going to be six years old on the 7th. Okay, anyway, it's a weekend. Uh, that's the reason why I'm telling you now, because it's a weekend. We're not going to be around for the commentaries on Saturday and Sunday. So, but anyway, have a good day, everybody. Have a good weekend, and let's celebrate. There's so many things to celebrate. I think uh, this Sunday also is, what, the Feast of the Baptism of our Lord? Epiphany. Oh, the Epiphany. Sorry, the Epiphany. That's right. Okay. So we have two more weeks for Christmas season, Okay. Because it's just the epiphany. Christmas season technically ends uh, uh, during the baptism of our Lord. So two more weeks of Christmas. So let's celebrate. Okay, everybody. Bye.